Hi, I'm Wade Curvita from Custom Fire, and behind me is a truck we just completed for the Bascom Joint Fire Protection District in Ohio. This truck is a full response tandem axle pumper built on a Kenworth T880 chassis. It features an MX-11 Packard diesel engine, and it has a Waterus 1250 GPM CS fire pump with a 1600 gallon poly tank and a 30 gallon foam cell. Now I threw some production photos of this truck getting put together on my personal Facebook page and it was awesome to see the overwhelming praise that it received and the truck wasn't even completed yet so obviously there's a lot of people excited to see this thing uh, completed and in action and nobody more so than the customers themselves. Now up front we have an extended uh, stainless steel front bumper with a large trash uh, line hose well in the front. We have the Q siren recessed into the front bumper. They actually took this off an old engine and you know we just charged them the install fee so they saved a couple grand right there by putting a Q siren they haven't changed since you know the 1800s probably so might as well use it again. Um, we have uh, some warning lights in the bumper and the grill. Up above we have the aero remote mirrors. We have a, a Spectra uh, LED brow light and we also have another Spectra telescoping light on the front of the crew cab corner. Now if you're at all familiar with our full response pumpers you, you notice that this truck the, the customer elected to upgrade the diamond plate to brushed stainless steel and I think it was an awesome choice just finishes off well it's gonna be very easy to keep clean and looking fresh over years and years of service uh, plus it's non-corrosive and our crew cab is always built out of 12 gauge stainless steel and the fire apparatus body is also 12 gauge stainless steel so this truck is just built for the long haul from tip to tail and it's 36 and a half feet long and it weighs 46,000 pounds with the 1600 gallons of water in the tank. All right with the various compartment doors open you can see that we have a couple pull out poly speed lays ahead of the crew doors each one of those will carry 200 feet of inch and three-quarter fire hose and the swivels are on the top. Down below we have kind of a bonus storage compartment. It's roughly you know 18 inches wide by about 14 inches tall and a couple feet deep. You know it's great for an extinguisher or some um, you know hand tools that sort of thing but in this case we have the onboard battery conditioner mounted in there plus we have the, uh, the shore power and air inlets on the door which is great because they're easily accessible, visible to the driver, but also serviceable from the back side of that door. And then uh, on the crew cab, of course, we have our crew door and then the removable side panels, which I've shown in previous videos. Uh, but on the apparatus body, you see that we have a couple adjustable pull-out tool boards. We have some air bottle brackets, uh, additional tracks for more uh, equipment mounting, and then in the rear, just some adjustable shelves. And uh, in the wheel well, we have storage for six air bottles. And what is also very interesting about this truck is that behind the rear wheels, underneath the tank uh, and underneath the frame rails, we actually have a pass-through sleeve for a little giant ladder. And you know, those little giant ladders are extremely uh, convenient and uh, safe to use, but they are kind of a pain to um, store on a truck. They're a little awkward shape and everything. So anytime you can do a pass-through sleeve or a stand-up vertical uh, divider, it's, it's really handy. Now, the size of the tank and everything uh, requires that we don't have a ton of depth up above. Actually, we do have quite a bit of depth, but not enough for a little giant to stand up in those compartments. We're at the operator panel inside the full response crew cab and you can tell right away that we do not have a back window. I mean, we've done a few trucks like this lately without a back window because camera technology has really improved and uh, what you can see on scene is just uh, a lot more informative than in years past. In this case, we have like a 360 style camera. We have side views, but we also have a front and a rear view. So, you know, they can see what's going on by tapping <laughs> there uh, this is the rear view of the truck and this is what you would use to watch a rear folding tank or uh, you know in a drafting situation and then this just gives you some situational awareness what's going on at the front of the truck uh, for the pump operator 
The pump panel environment here is, is pretty typical for what we have for an inside top mount on a full response crew cab. And in this case, we um, obviously went with as many manual controls as possible. That still seems to be the, the, the theme. Uh, you know, people just want that tactile functionality and the reliability, you know, that comes with a manual control uh, versus electric. So we have the controls for the discharges and tank to pump and tank fill with the push pull levers, the corresponding gauges, uh, foam control, tank level gauges, compound gauges, and then of course the pump bus pressure governor. And then across the lower section, we have um, uh, a master discharge on the officer side. We have the Trident auto air primer. Um, and then we have a pre primers on the side and rear intakes. So, you know, the scenario being that you roll up on scene, granted, they've got a 1600 gallon tank on this truck, but eventually you run out, you want to transition over to a uh, folding tank. You can pre prime through any of these intakes. You could have three folding tanks around this truck if you have the space. Typically, you're just going to have a rear one, maybe siphoned to a second one behind that. Uh, you can pre prime that intake and it'll hold the water there until you're ready to transition from your onboard booster tank to uh, your rear intake and uh, the pre-prime, you know, getting that done and, you know, basically uh, about 15 to 20 seconds to, to prime that rear intake line. And then the rest of the, the uh, console just has the heat exchanger, uh, pump cooler valve, uh, heat and air conditioning for the crew cab, and then a variety of rocker switches for the scene lighting, the uh, air horn and pump panel lights. All right, so I removed the access door below the pump controls, and this is, again, uh, very common in our full response pumpers. You can take this door completely out of the cab for more workspace, but essentially you just have phenomenal access to the fire pump right from the interior of the crew cab, and you can see the um, various valves, controls, uh, stainless steel manifolds, and then some of the ducting for the heat uh, and air conditioning system. And this, again, is a waterous, CS1250 fire pump. It's their full-bodied fire pump. It's not an end suction pump. It's the full-bodied style, which is really what uh, you should select if you want a waterous 1250 GPM fire pump. And uh, this truck again plumbed with gated side intakes and uh, a gated rear intake. So the full response crew cab again has pre-connected hose lays. It has seating. It has uh, the pump itself and then also the pump control panel but much more than that it serves as a great place for rehab um, and uh, just general um, you know getting people in and out of inclement weather it's a great spot for the pump operator to be focused on the task watching their water management and um, communications through radio now other features within the crew cab are going to be the storage we have a command desk here with a nice little you know, poly overlay storage underneath and then a large EMS cabinet here, which uh, the door swings open, kind of suicide style to allow access if you're kind of just in the doorway. And then above a shelf and then cabinets on each side. And then we have a power strip up there. We have uh, red and clear lighting uh, for daytime and nighttime operations. I've said it before, I'm gonna say it again, a lot of trucks are designed from the back forward, meaning that we take into consideration the desired hose lays, uh, the ladder storage, suction hose storage, and this truck's no different. In this case, we have the 1600 gallon tank on board with a 30 gallon foam cell, but you'll notice that that entire tank is basically tunneled right through. So inside that tunnel, we have two removable poly hose trays and then a 10 foot hard hose with an attached strainer. Each poly tray carries 300 feet of two and a half inch hose. And uh, the middle one will serve as the blitz fire line and the outboard one will serve as a foam uh, attack line. And below that the sleeve, we have a six inch stainless steel pipe for a rear intake. We even have a inch, uh, one inch discharge, which will serve as a jet siphon or uh, like a, um, a decon discharge on scene as well. Again, the ladder rack is on the officer side of the truck. It's our center arm ladder rack. And in this case, we're concealing everything with a parade panel on the outside. And that serves a purpose of um, a mounting area for scene and warning lighting, but also for the fire department uh, insignias. And then up over the tank is a pretty normal hose bed with a, a vinyl cover 
And then down alongside the hose bed is actually a walkway. So that's just a, you know, an excellent feature. Climb up the ladder, proceed down the walkway so you have a safe and easy access to the front of the body where your foam and water fill stacks are, but also your hose bed. On the officer side of the truck, we have a bit more going on in the compartments and that's pretty common being that this is usually where most of the rescue equipment is carried. And um, in the front officer side compartment, we have a large pullout drawer under a false floor and then a pullout tool board. So their rescue tools will be going in here, cordless hydraulic uh, rescue tools. And then over the rear wheels, we have a pullout oil dry container. We have storage for three air bottles. And then we have uh, an extinguisher rack uh, ahead of the uh, forward duals. And then we have our center arm ladder rack and behind the rear wheels we have some adjustable shelving. As I mentioned earlier, the ladder rack is concealed with a parade panel or a squad panel, whatever you want to call it, and that's where we've mounted some additional scene lighting and their uh, insignias. Now the ladder rack doesn't contain any equipment at the, at the moment, but uh, they'll be able to carry their extension, their roof, and their attic ladders here, and then there's also a large diamond plate box which will carry additional hard suction hose. All of us at Custom Fire appreciate the time you took to watch this video. We hope you like what you saw. If you're in the market for a new pumper, rescue, or tender, please look us up. We'd love to hear from you. You can find us at www.customfire.com. All right, let's get this over before my armpits start running. This thing will like, I can dump the air so the thing will squat. Should I do that? Then you can get a quick up and down. Okay, good. I got the name right. <laughs> like, oh, shit. Are they a department or a district? Everybody's like, district. yeah, I said that though. I don't even know where to start. I should restart. It's quick. Oh, Jesus Christ, if I don't fall out. Careful. There, that's for your bloopers. <laughs> um, America. Viva la America! What? So we've got a poly tray for two and a... <sighs> Go to... Go, dub... <sighs> hey, just want to let you guys know you're doing a great job. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> we appreciate the feedback. Put it in an email. <laughs> you can find us on the World Wide Web at www.customfire.com. Thank you for watching. Wait, Carvita, it's custom wire.